So I'm going to be talking about uh, cryptography. And um, I want to start with a question you don't have to answer. But um, have you had your crypto today? Do you think you've used crypto in the last year, maybe in the last month? Maybe you use it weekly, daily? What is your best guess at that thing? Well, my guess is that all of you, maybe not today because you got up early and came here already at 8 o'clock, but on a normal day, you use cryptography often. Um, you go to the internet, any site, like a bank site, if you do your shopping online, um, uh, if you do auctions on eBay and so on, all these sites use cryptography. And more sites use cryptography, not just only these who um, handle issues of money. And in fact, your cell phones, or if your employer gives you one of these little badges with RFID cards, you use cryptography then too. We basically use it all the time, all of us. And what is cryptography? Cryptography is a mathematical science, and amongst other things that you can do with crypto, it is the mathematical basis of everything on the internet which we call security. And it really provides on the internet both security and privacy. So it has its magic because it's built on math. And um, I would like to somehow try and uh, open this world to you and show you a little bit of crypto. But fear not, no math is going to be involved. I'm going to show you how to do crypto with um, um, an everyday household appliance. Um, not an appliance, really. The phone book. Um, you all know the game of heads or tails. So Sarah and Jim are playing in the afternoon, but at some point they need each to go to their respective homes, but they want to continue playing a little bit more. Um, so they have an idea. Let's play over the phone. Okay, so they go home and they're starting to play over the phone. And um, they're starting, so Jim tells Sarah, you call it. And she calls Tails. Okay, Jim is sitting in his home over the phone. He flips it. Ah, heads, you lose. Do you want to play again? Okay. So Sarah thinks maybe she'll change strategy. Um, and she says, heads. But what happens? Jim says, Tails, you lose again. <laughs> you know, at this point, Sarah's feeling a little bit uneasy about this whole game, you know. So do you think we could play heads or tails over the phone, it would be really surprising because how can we force this gym to be a little bit more upstanding citizen and really play properly? It seems that we might have a problem, but crypto to the rescue, and what do we do? We're gonna, don't get scared from this one-way functions at the top. We're not going to really be using functions in the mathematical sense, but we want some creature which is a function which has this property, that it's very easy to do, but it is hard to undo. Seems like a really strange thing, but I'll give you an example. And as we said, we're going to be doing our crypto with a phone book today. So the phone book is going to be our one-way function. And how is this one-way function going to work? We have the book. Let's say Jim and Sarah are playing. We said prehistorical times, so it must be something like 1973 because they have a phone book of Manhattan. And let's look at the following uh, question. If I asked you, what's Sean Casey's phone number? It's very easy to do, right? You just you know how to search alphabetically in the phone book. We've done it since we were kids. Now we don't search the phone book. We, but you do search a dictionary. It's exactly the same thing. And you simply look for Casey and Sean, and you know his phone number, whatever it is, 329-9412. So this is easy. This is an operation which is easy. What do you think would be the corresponding hard operation in the phone book? If I asked you, what does the number 5436912, who, sorry, who does the number 5436912 belong to, you're going to have a little bit of a harder time doing this. You're going to have to start on page number one and go number by number by number by number, flip to page number two, number by number by number. You're getting exhausted just for my description. So it's doable. 
it's doable. You could do it. Maybe, I don't know, five days later, you'll come and you'll tell me it's Joe Schmo. But this is hard, OK? So we have here a function. I explained to you a function which is easy to do, but it's hard to undo. It's hard to do the reverse operation of it. OK, let's go back to Sarah and Jim. They're still waiting for us on the phone to help them with the game because they're sort of stuck. So what will we do? We have our phone book, and both Sarah and Jim have the same phone book. And what will we ask Jim to do? He has to think whether he wants to flip heads or tails. And according to this chart up there, if he wants to choose heads, he has to choose a person with a name that starts with a letter between A and M. And if he wants to go with tails, he needs to choose a name that goes um, between the letters uh, N and Z. So Jim decides that he wants to choose tails. And you might think he's not really flipping a coin, but it really doesn't matter. Whatever he chooses, Sarah has exactly the same chances of guessing whether it's heads or tails, unless she's applying some psychological uh, gaming uh, thing. But let's assume that that doesn't exist. So what does, what does Jim say? He found a person. In fact, I'll tell you. He cho chose tails, and he found somebody called Rob Yee. Who ha was, this is his phone number. This is Rob Yee's phone number. So he just says this phone number to Sarah. And now Sarah has to say heads or tails. And she says heads. Now, she doesn't have enough time to look to see who this is. So she can't cheat Jim in this game. But on the other hand, Jim can't change his coin. After she said heads, let's say it, it, she said tails, which was really what he chose, he can't change it anymore because the book is printed. And that number belongs to only one single person inside the book. So then he tells her the name is Rob Yi. And now she says, I lose. But this time I believe you. She opens the phone book. She, she can't find the number, but once he gives her the name, she can see that this is actually the number, and he, she knows that he actually had chosen tails. OK, so this is really this thing, which I showed you here. We're really causing Jim to commit to something. This is a cryptographic commitment scheme. And we use them vastly in all the cryptographic algorithms that I talked about in the internet. These things exist and are being utilized, of course, with mathematical tools. OK. So um, let's go to another thing. Yeah, uh, Jim and Sarah, they're tired of doing heads and tails all the time. They really met to exchange um, uh, stock advice. Uh, given our previous talk, we see maybe it's not uh, such a good idea. But anyways, um, they want to do it. But as you remember, they're still using the phone. And they want to change these stock advices, but they really have a fear that someone is listening. So if um, uh, Sarah would tell Jim, you know, you should buy this stock, then the other person immediately is going to run and do this thing. They don't want this to happen. They want to keep their um, uh, advice secret. So how can we do this? Uh, how can we transmit a message secretly when somebody is listening? So let's go back to our one-way functions. You remember our one-way functions from a few seconds ago. We had something that was easy to do, but hard to undo. This is going to be a problem here, right? Because if she sends him something, but it's very hard for him to undo by the time he figures whether he has to buy or sell, you know, the company most likely will have gone out of business. So we have to do something else. We need more special one-way functions. What's going to be our special one-way function? It's going to be a one-way function with a trapdoor. And immediately, you know, this trapdoor thing, it ex immediately gives you the right feeling that there is a trick. You know, there's something, some way to get around this thing. So our one-way functions are still going to be easy to do. And they're going to be hard to undo for most people. Most people are not going to be able to undo um, the computation that we're doing. But it's going to be easy to undo for those who know the trapdoor. We're going to have some group of people. It could be one person. It could be maybe only Jim who has the trapdoor. And for these people, this computation is going to be easy. They're going to be able to um, compute the reverse function. 
But I promised you only phone books, no math. So how are we going to do this? Let's go back to our phone book. I created a little phone book here because I want to show you specifically uh, how to do this. And um, of course, the phone book has to be much larger for, it to be, for something to be hard, you remember. Because if I give you something here, I mean, even the slow people amongst us can find some number fairly quickly. <laughs> OK, so now we are going to encode um, the, the, the question whether you want to buy or sell. If Sarah wants to say buy, she's going to say a name between A and M. And if she wants to say sell, she's going to say a name between N and Z. Just as before, we somehow splitted the range between these two operations. And now, she sends over the number, 7607365. But as we said, if it was just a regular one-way function, poor Jim is really stuck on the other end. So he doesn't know if to buy or to sell. But our one-way functions with trapdoors are going to be the following. We have this um, phone book that I showed you before. But this phone book is going to change magically into another entity where you see it's sorted by the numbers. This again, you know how to do very easily. You know how to search a number in a long list of numbers if they're sorted. So how would this thing work here? If you had, if Jim is holding this thing, this reverse um, phone book, he got the message from Sarah, 760-7365. And now he just goes and he sees that this number belongs to Liam. So he immediately knows that he has to um, buy the stock that Sarah is recommending. So, the question is, how do you get this special trap door? So for example, if it was a phone book, yeah, maybe you could pay the uh, phone company, I don't know, $2,000 to send you uh, the numbers, um, the book sorted by numbers. You could do that, possibly. But really, in reality, what we do with all these things, this thing which I showed you now is, in fact, called encryption. And all these things, um, in the real world of crypto, when we're not giving a talk, it's not done with a phone book. And we have a lot of mathematical um, tools that enable this thing. Um, and for example, to achieve encryption, um, we have an easy operation, which would be multiplying two numbers. And the hard operation would be taking a large composite and factoring it into its uh, prime factors. So this would be something in the mathematical realm. So what I want to say in conclusion is that um, crypto is really a magical thing. Uh, it's based on math, which is already magical within itself. And then in crypto, somehow, uh, we manage to do things that you would not think that can be done, as I showed you, playing heads and tails over the phone. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Really, this area is filled with magic. And um, if you amongst the audience have kids who love math and love computer science, then I would highly recommend uh, this area because I really think it is uh, wonderful and it's a joy to work in. So thank you very much.